The Ulysses Writing Program is one of the hottest apps for writers in the market right now. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Ulysses in 20 minutes. I'll get you up and running on your first project so you can focus on your writing. What's up guys? This is Michael Aron with Author Level Up, helping you write world-class stories better and faster. I do writing app and writing advice videos every week, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. So let's jump right into Ulysses so you can learn the basics. We are here in Ulysses, and I wanted to give you a practical, short and sweet crash course to the app to get you up and running, because I think that this app, out of all the different writing apps that I cover on the channel, is probably one of the easiest ones to get up and going as soon as possible. So I am here in the standard configuration of Ulysses, but before we get into the app too deeply, I wanted to talk about a feature that you definitely want to know about. So Ulysses has different um, modes. So for example, I have the light mode right now, so all my screens or everything is white, but Ulysses also has a really slick dark mode that I wanted to show you how to get to. So if you go to view and then you go to appearance, and you can change that to dark you will notice that that changed part of the app. And then if I go back to view and then I go to dark theme, that'll change the word processing piece. So I think Ulysses has a great looking dark mode. It's got the best looking dark mode out of um, just about all the writing apps out there on the market. And for the purposes of this video, I found that the black and white contrast looks a little bit better when I'm doing these demonstration videos. So I'll be continuing with that. But if you ever want to switch back to the Ulysses white mode, you just need to know you can just go to view and appearance and then um, uncheck the dark theme. All right, so as I said before, this is the standard configuration of Ulysses. You'll see that there are three major panes here. So on the left hand side, we've got our library. So the unique selling proposition of Ulysses is that it offers what's called a universal library. So everything you write lives in this library and it's accessible to you with just one click at any time. So let's say, for example, I write fiction. Every novel I have is going to be stored in the universal library. If I write nonfiction, Every nonfiction book I write is going to be stored in the Universal Library along with my fiction. I write YouTube scripts and podcast scripts and, and blog posts. All of those are also going to be housed in the Universal Library. So meaning I can click between them without having to open up different files. So if you think about or if you contrast that to Scrivener, or Microsoft Word, which are file based or project based, you wouldn't be able to do that. So you would have to have um, one novel as one Word doc or, or, or one series as one Scrivener project, and then you'd have your nonfiction as another Scrivener project. And if you wanted to switch between the two, you'd have to close one and then open up the other. With Ulysses, everything lives together, which makes it really cool because you can access it very quickly and you don't have to worry about any um, issues. Now I want to touch really very briefly on how Ulysses categorizes files. So Ulysses uses what's called sheets, groups, and filters. So if I click on this here, I can create a sheet by simply clicking on the little pencil like that, or I can do command N, or I can go to file and then go to new sheet. So we'll open up a new sheet. So these are basically like the chapter levels. This is each individual file. So if you look at the Ulysses demo over here, this is a group. So if you think about the group as a folder and then the sheet as an individual chapter, then you know everything you need to know. Now Ulysses also has filters. I won't go into that for the sake of time in this video, but the nice part about the filters is that you can actually filter documents within your group based on what's in the documents. So it, it, it's really cool um, and just take a minute to play around with it. Very easy to use. So I want to show you the universal search. So if I go back to my author level up section here and let's say I want to search my group author level up for every instance of the word Ulysses. So these are all the scripts I've written between 2015 and today. I can just simply type in Ulysses and it will return everything. So that's quite a few scripts that I've mentioned the word Ulysses in. Now what takes this to the next level and what's what makes this really cool is let's say I want to change the parameters. So I can search for any headings that have the word Ulysses in them. So if I'm writing blog posts and I'm sectioning them out, if I use Ulysses in any of those sections, then it'll find it. I can search for every instance of a bolded text. So any text I've bolded across my author level up scripts, I can find it. Um, and what's really cool is you can also search for every instance of a link. 
So if I have a link, it doesn't matter what it is, if I have a link, Ulysses can find it. That's the benefit of having a universal library because everything lives together. And man, this is just so cool. It, it's just so helpful when I write fiction, nonfiction, and, and YouTube scripts. I can jump between everything with just a click of a button. So going back to our Ulysses demo group here, if you're using this app for the first time, chances are you've probably got something written and you just need to import something into it. Well, how do you do that? It's actually very simple. Now I have, you can't see it on the screen, but I have a Word doc on my desktop. What I'm gonna do is just simply drag the Word doc over, like so, into the middle pane. All right, and so it imported the Word doc directly into Ulysses. Now, you'll notice some things look a little bit different. I'll talk about why that looks a little different in a second. And the only caveat to this is that you cannot split them up smartly, meaning Ulysses isn't gonna recognize chapters or sections. And so you will have to go through and um, update and edit those as you go through. So let's say you wanna go through and start breaking out chapters and things like that. It's as simple as basically putting your cursor where you want the chapter to end, right clicking, and then selecting split here. And then that's how you can just go through and carve out your chapters. And as you'll see in the middle, you can see a nice little line that separates them um, when, you're, when you're browsing through it. So that's how you can import files into Ulysses. All right, so let's talk about how you actually get some writing done in Ulysses. So let's go back to our empty sheet here and we'll move into the, the heart of the app, which is the word processing pane. Now. This is actually really slick. So let's say I just wanted to start typing here and we'll call it chapter one. And as you can see, the middle pane updates. It provides you a small preview of what's in each sheet. And so we'll just uh, do some typing here. All right, so Ulysses uses what's called Markdown, and Markdown scares a lot of people. It sends them running away screaming, but it's actually very simple. Markdown is just a syntax to make sure that your writing appears cleanly and correctly in HTML. So it's just simply a way for you to make sure that when you export this into an HTML file, into a Word doc, or into an ebook, that it's going to look like you intended it. So why, why is that important? Well, if you think about ebooks, an ebook really is just a glorified HTML file. So if you, you can ensure that your book looks good in HTML, then you know your ebook is going to look good. So Markdown is really just another way for you to do that. So as you're going to find, it's going to be very simple to use. It requires a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's really not that bad. So let's say I wanted to create a heading. So in my chapter heading, I would just simply put a hashtag here. And you can see it changed it and it bolded it over here in the center pane. That's a that's the same as a heading. So when I export that into a blog post or into a into a book, it's gonna be basically it's gonna look bolded. Alright, so if I wanted to bold something, I could just simply do as I do in Microsoft Word today, which is Command B, or I could put two asterisks asterisks around around it, and that would be the same as bolding it. If I wanted to, let's say, create a link to Ulysses, uh, that, that's, that's a bit more complicated. So what I can do is I can go over here to this button here, to the markup button, and then I can choose from the options and I can select link or I could do command K. And then I could say, I just wanna do ulyssesapp.com and then hit enter. And then that's what a link looks like. And then if I wanted to turn something into italics, I could just simply command I, same as you would in any word processor today. So that's really what it looks like. It's, it's like I said, it's a little bit different to see your work encapsulated in hashtags and asterisks and brackets, <laughs> you know, it, it's different, but here's the benefit. So if I click this little preview button here, and then I select preview to HTML, and I click the little view, button here, it'll pop up a window. And this is what it looks like. So super clean, right? It, it, it looks exactly as it should look in HTML. Now, if I select EPUB, that's also what it's going to look like in the EPUB. I think that's pretty cool. 
So th like I said, Ulysses Markdown is a way to help you write cleaner because we all know that Microsoft Word, if you do formatting in that, it's going to introduce a lot of bloat. And Ulysses is one of the ways to make sure that you c can export a clean ebook file. All right, so that's basically a crash course on how to write in Ulysses. Now, there's another mode that I want to show you. It's called typewriter mode. So I can go to view, select typewriter mode, and then do enable. And then what that does is it creates a typewriter effect. So for example, if I hit enter, it sends the text up and I can just do So basically it works just like a typewriter, which I think is kind of cool if you're into that. So we'll disable that. Now the great thing about Ulysses is that it will sync your work. So if you're working on your Mac or if you're working on your phone, doesn't matter, it will sync them seamlessly using iCloud. And I, I won't go into how that works in this video, but just know that it's very simple to set up and something that you should use. And I think you'll be amazed um, at how quickly and um, seamlessly this works in the background as you're working across your different devices. Now to continue in the word processing, we'll hit these little buttons up here. So I've showed you the preview button, which basically allows you to export to different formats. As you can see there, including WordPress and Medium, Ulysses syncs up directly with those. So that's just a way for you to export, preview, do all that good stuff. Ulysses also offers statistics. So if you click the little the speedometer button, it'll show you how many characters, words, things like that that are in your manuscript. This is just a high level architecture of um, if you're using uh, any of the hashtags, you know, this the structure of your manuscript. This is the word, the, the markdown piece that I talked about earlier. And then this is a feature that works very similar to the um, inspector in Scrivener. So for example, you can enter keywords. I won't go into those in this video. And you can go into goals and you basically create writing goals. So you can create a goal of a thousand words and you can create a deadline, which is great. And then you can, if you wanted to, create notes that won't show up in your exported manuscript. And then if you wanted to, you could add images in here as well. Now I wanted to cover another thing in Ulysses that makes multitasking a dream in this app that I don't know that any other apps offer. So we've got our demo here. Let's say I want to work on two different documents at the same time. How do I do that? So if I go to File and then I go to New Window, that creates another window. Now what I can do is I can drag it so see, it basically created two separate incidences of the app. And if I, I have two screens on my desktop, so what I can do is I can just kind of drag this away so you can't see it anymore. But what's really cool about it is that now what I can do is I can have two completely different windows open up at the same time and work on them. So to make this, to give you a practical example of how you would do this, let's say you have an outline and then you want your manuscript up at the same time. That happens a lot, right? So you can have your manuscript in one window and your outline in another window, and you can work on them simultaneously. That's really cool. Now, another feature that, that is pretty cool is you can create tabs. So let's say I want to create a tab. You go to File, New Tab, and then it creates tabs kind of like in your browser. So if I click on this one right here, this is the Chapter 1 tab, right? So let's say that I wanted to create a new chapter. And we'll call this chapter two. And I want to switch between chapter one and chapter two. Well, I can click the tabs and drag them like that. So then that way I can have chapter one here and then click over and have chapter two here. And let's say when I'm writing chapter two, for whatever reason, I don't want the library window there. So I can switch and then I can have the library there in chapter one, one configuration switch over to chapter two, have a completely different configuration. And then if I wanted to add another tab, I just simply click here to create a new tab. This works exactly as it would work in just about any modern browser. That's actually, I think it's pretty cool. And for those of you who want to have your text smaller or bigger, you can change your size of your text by simply going to view, zoom, and then you can choose one of these here. So if I do command plus, that makes the text bigger. If I do command minus, that makes the text smaller. So if I go into preferences here, this basically takes me to some preferences that I can customize really quickly, which I think are helpful. So under the general tab, so you can change line height. So 
Uh, one of the first things out of the box that you're going to want to change is your line height because I found that out of the box it looks really weird. So I found that 1.5, 1.6 is helpful for me. You can update your paragraph spacing. Um, out of the box, Ulysses does not do first line indent. So I've updated mine to, you know, to update that. And just keep in mind, this is just for the app itself. It's not necessarily for when you export it. You can, you can update your settings and change things when you export it. So if I go to library here, it's just nothing you really fancy that you need to see. Just make sure you have that iCloud checked. And then for markup, you'll notice that I had different themes. This is where you can change those. So I, I won't go into those, but there are plenty of them that you can update and change. You can also even change the different colors of the different elements if you wanted to. And if you wanted more, you could just simply click that little button. That'll launch you over to the Ulysses website where you can download new themes to use for yourself. Accounts, that's just um, your accounts for WordPress and Medium to connect those together. Um, backup. It's pretty important make sure that's enabled and then if you ever did want to browse backups you know this it automatically backs up your work hourly daily and weekly but if you did want to browse them all you'd have to do is click that browse backup button and it launches you into like a, a safety mode and then you can browse through your old work like so so very cool and very easy to access any work in the unlikely event that you ever were to lose it so there's also a privacy mode you know, if you're into locking your documents and things like that, you can just for, make sure you remember your password. Um, and then here's your serial information. And then um, for styles, if you notice when I was doing previews, there the, the you notice that the PDF and the Word doc styles looked a little bit different. So this is where you can kind of change and customize those. And um, you can also download some styles on the Ulysses database. So it's really just giving you some some more options in terms of how you want your final manuscript to look and you also have the ability to do this yourself and you can create your own but that does require you to know css and if you don't know css um, i don't recommend that you go that route because there are plenty of uh, different styles and, and resources that are already done for you that you know i don't know that it's necessary all right so that is the ulysses app so i hope you can see now why i like this app so much it's just so easy to use and so fun and if you're really struggling with writing and you just need some additional help getting those words onto the page and you need something that doesn't necessarily have all the bells and whistles ulysses may be the app that you want to consider i hope that was a short and sweet introduction to ulysses for more tutorials and tips check out my ulysses video playlist and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for new videos every week